so Ach Pema came over. And by that time, I figured out how to turn it off. Down in the <clears throat> and then, uh, but it was pouring through the light, you see, the electric light. <clears throat> so Ach Pema thought, well, we'd better check that out. We went down to where the fuse box is. And, and then that began to spark, <coughs> flames coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so by the end of it, we, I didn't have any water, any electricity. <laughs> <laughs> something. So make it a totally generous act, like being really considerate to be <coughs> to be on time and get there early. You don't 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 get bound by the schedule, but <coughs> offer time as much as you can to praying for peace or meditating for peace. Don't just go by the the schedule is just a kind of skeleton. Uh, just uh, it's all it is. It's not meant to be. <coughs> I've signed up for this period, and I'm not going to meditate any other time. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not the kind of uh, guard duty, military guard duty that I'm asking. And joy comes from giving, so so make offerings to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, welfare of all things and beings, sharing of merit, praying for peace. Projecting uh, radiating peacefulness. So be peaceful yourself. See? Uh, trying to, to find or be peaceful with with yourself and with the beings around you. So it's not just a, a kind of may all beings be peaceful and then feeling very upset and angry about somebody that <coughs> sneezes or whatever in the meditation hall. Because you, because you have, uh, you think you understand the word peace. So much of the peace movement, people are shouting for peace. But is there anything but peaceful? <clears throat> What do you mean when you talk about let's be peaceful? Just have things non-conflicting, or <clears throat> what do you mean by ask yourself? So you really try to understand peacefulness rather than just go around with an idea in your head about how things should be peaceful. It's easy to go around saying the world should be peaceful, the Americans should be peaceful, and the Iraqis should be peaceful. It's always them, isn't it, wanting those out there to be peaceful. And so, uh, you know what it is, you know what peace really is. You know how to be peaceful. Before you go around pointing the finger at Saddam Hussein or George Bush, you find out just where peace is and what it really means. What you have to give up for peacefulness. Because uh, peacefulness doesn't come through through uh, giving orders or trying to control everything, but by being aware and having the right attitude, <coughs> not caught in heedless uh, reactions. <coughs> So 
metta practice, metta, these kind of words, metta, pra, uh, loving kindness, patience. Try to be peaceful even with your mad mind. If your mind's going crazy, then learn how to be peaceful with the mad mind. How do you do that? I mean, non conflicting, non contending. In order to do that, you have to have refuge. You can't. You can only be frightened by madness if you have no refuge. If you have a refuge, then there's nothing to be frightened of. So that's why this retreat has been emphasizing the refuges <coughs> and how to realize, make those refuges powerful and real, true refuges rather than just sentiments. For those of you who have been busy working the past couple of days and getting very active in it, observe just what it's like to go back to a passive retreat. There's an activity and that stimulates and one gets stirred up and gets set into motion, gets wound up. <coughs> and to sit with that feeling of, if you're wound up, to be able to sit and watch uh, and be peaceful with a feeling of a, a kind of compulsive, restless energy that wants to run around, run about. Just observe that. Let it sit and just observe what feeling of a uh, very restless. million things to do type of feeling. <coughs> There's an article in some magazine recently, or a letter to the editor saying that, that <coughs> The Archbishop of Canterbury's prayers for <clears throat> preventing a war in the Gulf and the prayers of the various religious groups didn't work because there's obviously a Gulf war, so obviously prayer doesn't have any effect. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can look at it in that very kind of coarse way, you know. I won't pray until I see that my prayers are being realized. And if, you know, if, if it doesn't change anything, then why bother to pray? A waste of time. Might as well sit and grouse about the war and hate the Iraqis or whatever. Or, what is the, what is the effect of prayer <clears throat> worship, meditation, these, these are mental activities which you're establishing, uh, they, you're, you're getting in touch with more intuitive awareness of things. It's, a, it's making yourself receptive and aware, allowing <clears throat> yourself to be receptive and aware, humble, like prayer is a, in a Christian sense, it always, if it's not just a childish thing of give me this and give me that, it, it's a humbling uh, willingness to surrender your ego and your pride and conceit for the welfare of other beings. You got the right thing to do, beautiful thing to be able to do. So prayer and Worship and devotion and uh, right meditation all come from the heart, from the intuition. Mind your, your your mind is a receptive, sensitive awareness, rather than grasping ideas and 
projecting out onto everything your own prejudices and views, fears and desires. Do you know the difference? Where there is a real receptivity and sensitivity to time and place and where you're just sitting projecting everything out, creating uh, all kinds of things on about yourself, about others, about the world. And the conditioned mind does that when you follow thoughts in a conditioned way of just habitual thinking and and uh, conceptual proliferation. Then you're you're just projecting a world. You're creating a world and and kind of believing in the projections that you've created. And those creations are out of ignorance. They're not out of understanding the world. Out of uh, insight knowledge about the world <clears throat> all just the Pavlovian dog perversions aberrations, convolutions fragmentations permutations variations complications isn't it very complicated some of you are really complicated people Nothing is simple for you. <coughs> Mountains out of molehills. Some of you see a molehill and you think, God, it's a big mountain. You see, see some, some little thing and you, it becomes ginormous. Everything is, is absolutely and, and, Just absolutely shattering. Remember one woman I know, she describes everything as I was utterly shattered, absolutely shattered by this. What what was happened was somebody probably just <clears throat> you know, put the put the coffee cup in the in the wrong place. I was utterly, totally shattered by that. Everything is, is in these extreme expressions, emotional expressions, and that's really dishonest. It's really a bad use of language to exaggerate. <clears throat> One needn't be totally and absolutely shattered by a molehill. <clears throat> So really look at it and, and just see see the, the the conditioned mind will make these these uh, proclamations and so forth. It, it's it's it will it's not to be <coughs> trusted how your mind's been conditioned. It's, it's out of avicca, not understanding dhamma. Human beings are really quite resilient and tough. <coughs> We can take a lot. But some of you, I mean, I think middle class Western people are just so spoiled that they, they're absolutely shattered over nothing. I mean, when you look at what most people have to put up with in the world, and you you get so utterly shattered over the way somebody looks cross-eyed at you. Don't you? Some of you just absolutely ruins you for life because somebody didn't speak to you this morning. Somebody doesn't love you or something happened to you ten years ago that you can never forget. And your mother didn't love you enough. Your father rejected you and, and is just completely shattered and ruined your life. And going on like that is just it's just conceptual proliferation. It's just melodrama. <clears throat> Sometimes when you have a tougher life, you just have to <clears throat> bear up with life. I mean, you're <laughs> trying to get something to eat just to feed uh, three starving children, or put up with a drunken husband, or something like that. Uh, and just get by on a, just for survival. Women, women can incredibly 
tough creatures when they have to be, when life forces it on them, or the spoiled middle class Western woman is utterly shattered over over uh, the way a cloud floats through the sky. With men, Western men, we're so we're so fixed in our ideas. We've got so many prejudices and views. We believe them and we, we never question them. So we just, men, Western men are just really insensitive creatures. Because they're always coming from their heads. They don't develop their hearts very much. You don't find really heartfelt warmth from Western men very much. It's always ideas, ideals, positions to take. Be very self-righteous and judgmental, and and think we know everything because we're well educated. One of the biggest uh, failures of Western society and the, in my generation here are Buddhist Western <clears throat> Buddhists who believe they understand it because they they figured out the words. So the peace vigil is an actual offering. It's it's from the heart. It's not a duty from your head. It's not. It's voluntary. You sign up. Nobody's going to hold a gun at you and force you into <coughs> signing up for any of this. So you uh, make offerings, and then and then. That attitude of giving, of dana, of, of devotion, of blessings, of refuge, these heartfelt, <clears throat> uh, developing that the heart, the intuition, the receptivity, is 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 what we can actually do to help the world at this time. Because what good is it if we just come from our own fixed views, opinions, habits, and just blindly carry on. We're just the same as Saddam Hussein and George Bush. Maybe not as powerful or not as as destructive, but we've got, we're working coming from the same place. The same delusion is still operating on question. With the English mentality. Really look at that tendency to understate things, and because it's a, it's a, a cultural habit that tends to be also dishonest. Because everything is put in a negative or almost diminished form, and and it's much more important to really to to try to describe and give accurate use language accurately, best we can. Not to just be super polite and nice and and just uh, obsequious and understating everything. And uh, Americans tend to go the other way. Everything is is too much, so superlative. These are these are cultural tendencies, cultural conditioning. But in Dhamma, then we're 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 trying to use our ability to speak and think, you know, in a, as accurately as possible. Right speech comes from right understanding and right uh, thought. The intuition is is a ability of a human being to be receptive here and now. You, you're receptive. Your your mind is is not bound to anything. And intuitive people, their their mind is not biased or prejudiced at that moment. 
It's receptive. It, it sees and knows the way it is. But then the conditioned mind can easily uh, give the wrong interpretations. So sometimes people's intuitions come out as, as rather bizarre because they they have not developed the ability to express accurately in words an intuitive an, an intuition. Now remember this the, the this this form we're in the human form is a sensitive form. It, it's not it's it's here and now form. It's sitting here. And the time is now, and the sensitivity is now, isn't it? It's not being sensitive during the peace vigil when it starts tomorrow. It's sensitivity is now like this. It feels this way. The pain, the the pleasure, the indifference, <coughs> the the heat, the cold, the 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 emotional states, the feeling of being happy and joyous, <laughs> or being depressed and despairing. Now when we when we absorb into those moods then we're, we're in our intuitions, intuitive nature is uh, stopped, doesn't work. When we just become the moods we're in or the feelings or the conditions, the, sens- the sensitivity, when we become a sensitive person we're no longer we're no longer uh, open and receptive to the flow of life. We've become somebody or something or other. So the Buddha image is, is a good good example of, is a good uh, symbol, isn't it? The Buddha is there, <coughs> the intuitive faculty completely <coughs> com- operating, <coughs> totally operating receptive, aware, awake, not deluded, not misunderstanding, not misinterpreting the way it is. So to be able to develop the intuitive ability, you have to you have to really let your own fears and desires into your consciousness. Allow them to be conscious be, and be aware of them. Intuitively aware of fear and desire rather than reacting, absorbed into it, indulging or suppressing in fear and desire. It's receptive to fear and desire. It's receptive but not absorb, absorbing into it. It's different, isn't it? Receptivity is a, is a is a is a refuge absorption and then you become what you the object you become like that you become somebody you become uh, despairing or depressed you become elated or happy you become somebody who's cold somebody who's hot somebody who's whatever through absorption into the uh, into the arama now or the objects, so to to transcend or to to break the habit of absorption of becoming, then you you uh, develop this patient practice of patient awareness, mindfulness, reflection. Dharma reflection, refuge, loving kindness is where is is an attitude of receptive being receptive to the negative of life. Metta loving kindness. You you you're willing to endure the unendurable. You're willing to accept the unacceptable. You're willing to be patient with the irritating, frustrating conditions of yourself, of your mind and, and the other and the conditions outside yourself. Metta. You're willing and to bear with the way it is when it when it's not the way we want it to be. Patience, metta and 
patience, kanti, patient endurance. <coughs> Like when you're sitting and you you feel restless or negative, or dull, or these hindrances, then to be receptive to it, rather than to try to get rid of it, to bear with it. It doesn't bear and enduring doesn't mean a kind of willful uh, putting up with it. That's not receptivity, is it? A kind of just willing, making yourself put up with something, you know, kind of gritting your teeth and trying to conquer it, or just endure from a willful act. But it's much more beautiful uh, way. The, the the Dhamma is always the way of great beauty and perseverance. It isn't a willful act from the ego, but a the a peacefulness of the heart, an opening of the heart to these uh, hindrances, these negative states, where you can actually see them, rec- accept them for what they are, know them when they're present, when they're absent, rather than, than just trying to get rid of them. doesn't matter if our peace vigil has absolutely no effect whatsoever on the goal for it, does it? <laughs> We're not trying to stop the goal for I'm not. I'm not. I have no desire to stop the goal for The goal for is the karma of humanity. We have to live with it. We have to accept it and bear with it with what happens and not just oh please stop it and we don't like it and it's not nice kind of thing it is the result it's the karma it's our karma which means that that it's, it's going to be the way it is and this isn't a statement of, of fatalism you know just saying that but it is a determination you know, on the, on this individual level not to create that karma in my own life that that makes gulf wars possible. We can do that much. That I can do. I can put forth the effort not to to follow the same uh, conditions, the ignorance. That is uh, that where Gulf Wars are the results. I can't make you do that. I encourage you. I'm encouraging you now. But uh, I can't make Saddam Hussein or George Bush or Mr. Major or any of these people uh, can't transform. They, they're the results of their karma. Heirs of their karma. Humanity is like this. In other words, where, where humanity is right now is it's uh, it's our Gulf War mentality. Generally speaking, it's our karma. This is war is our karma. We're we're warlike beings. We our civilizations. We're all developments out of conquering other groups, weren't they? And subduing and dominating other groups. It's our karma. And you read about the fall of the Roman Empire. All those Goths, Visigoths and barbarians from the north, the Germanic tribes. <laughs> The Huns and all these, these people coming in to, to dominate and destroy. And uh, this, the North American continent was an, 
just the willful act of Europeans to just take over somebody else's land, completely subdue them and destroy their very soul, their very their their self-respect. American Indians, they were they were destroyed as a nation by the Europeans. So the this Americans wanting to destroy Saddam Hussein, also, well, same, working on the same principle. It's in the blood, it's in the genes. He's in the way, he's a problem, get rid of him. It's the way we deal with life, isn't it? The way we deal with, with pests. With the rent to kill, insect killers, fly sprays, mosquito sprays, everything that is irritating and on that we don't like, we just spray it. And it shrivels up and dies. Yeah, got rid of that. So I can live a much you know, I can live without that inconvenience to my life. But now we're we're learning to Endure inconvenience, like the snow. Learn how to endure the, the kind of problem, difficulty that come from weather like this. <clears throat> With the freezing of pikes and the, and the disruptions and the inconvenience, annoyances. And, and these are relatively minor compared to what's going on in other places at this time. Really, nothing much. But, but look at try to to use the situation just to to kind of be more receptive and aware of your own negative states that arise when things get in your way, or or your your routine is disrupted, or there's irritating pests around, or there's uh, problems arising. So that you, you rather than just being the kind of a, a Western warrior where you just shoot them, shoot anything that gets in your way, annihilationist, you you learn how to bear with, how to reflect, how to endure what you think you can't endure. Just like if. Midnight drink. It's embarrassing. I find it embarrassing that we have to have drinks for everything. Like taking a horse to a stream. You say, now the drink. Something really awful about that. And then you just may have time for tea or something. Put it, make it more euphemistic. The drinks at one. We'll have a drink now. <laughs> drinks at five. <laughs> Anybody who goes to work at one gets rewarded with a drink. <laughs> Don't they? How many of you would go to work without a drink at one? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> but this, this, what I'm saying is that is pointing to, trying to point to anyway, is is that the work has to come from within here. I mean, it's, it's just <coughs> I'm I'm really no longer <coughs> demanding the world be anything other than the way it is. Saddam Hussein and George Bush, John Major, and all the rest of them, Gorbachev, the whole lot, are the way they are. They're the result of their karma. This is the way it is. <clears throat> and we say, you, we don't like the way you are. You should be otherwise. But maybe they aren't very good. Maybe they are uh, villains or baddies or whatever. But that's, that's the result of ignorance. 
And as long as we're coming out of ignorance, we're, we're really, we might not be in positions where we can cause as much damage as they can, but, but we're still contributing to the general karma of that, that kind of karma, that kind of ignorance. And this is where it's uh, so, uh, this opportunity we have here to get out of that whole trap of ignorance is what, what the Buddha offered in his teaching. How to get outside that that whole dismal, foolish, uh, kind of hopeless despair of the conditioned mind. So when when we have compassion for Saddam Hussein, rather than, well, wish we could get rid of him. America, George Bush would love it if somebody just went in and shot Saddam Hussein to the brain. Oh, that'd be such a relief, wouldn't it? Get that guy out of the way. (laughs) Because that's how we tend to see it, isn't it? You get somebody like that, uh, it's best if you just shoot them, get rid of them. But he's not really the, I mean, he's he's just uh, one of the victims of this uh, wrong view. And just by shooting him is not is not creating the karma, good karma, which will help any of us really. <clears throat> so compassion, they to rather than uh, <clears throat> react with hatred to hatred, you one one sends forth metta, metta karuna. People say, well, what if, what if the British, when Hitler was trying to invade Britain, what if the British didn't just let the Nazis take over Britain and then they <coughs> put them all in concentration camps and turn all the British women into prostitutes and the, then they, then they, uh, they just uh, take over Britain and, uh, and destroy it. That's what happened if the Nazis invaded Britain and the British just didn't put up a fight. But how do you know? It never really happened. I mean, we're we're always we're always reacting when hatred arises from somebody. We react with hatred. So it's uh, you know people get slaughtered and in wars like now so many. People probably in Iraq are just being kind of killed off, and they're just people that happen to be in the wrong place. Not that they've done anything wrong, particularly. But if you if you realize how, when you when you contend with hatred, with aversion to hatred. You increase it. It's just the, the law of karma. When you when you don't contend with it, then hatred ceases. Hatred needs hatred to feed on. It needs to be fed by hatred. It it dies away. It fades out when there when it's not being fed with hatred. So I mean the. In uh, the Gulf, we've got so many, so much concern because of the wealth, the, all the oil, and the American standard uh, is being uh, might be lessened. Living standard, we can bear to have to pay more for petrol in that in the states. Better to kill off of several thousands of Iraqis, you know, so that Americans can buy their cars on uh, cheap gas. Or just the wanting to dominate and control a, a wealthy area, have, have put your foot in the door, have, uh, have be the one who who has uh, has the influence. But the karma result of this will, will not be very good. I I know it's it's going to be pretty awful because it's. 
it's, uh, it's, it's all done out of this, this uh, Pavlovian dog conditioning. Not, it's not well thought out or through right understanding of, of what the problem really is or how to deal with, with people like Saddam Hussein or uh, Arab uh, Muslims. So this, we have to just put bear with the karma of this. But in our own lives, we can put forth that right effort to not make those same mistakes. Because what right do we have to condemn and point to others if we're not, you know, why should, why should they do it? Why don't we do it? Why don't I do it? seems ridiculous, doesn't it, when you think of it like, yeah, I want you to do it for me. I want George Bush to become an enlightened arahant for me. I want John Major to, to do all the right things for me so we can live in peace here in Britain and we won't have these dreadful wars and and terrorism and all that, we can get rid of all that because I don't, it, it upsets me it makes me feel insecure to have terrorists IRA and Palestinians, PLO and all these kind of, these kind of uh, specters and phantoms because it's what I can do for myself and it's also for the welfare of others because my life isn't uh, just a, a totally alienated, isolated thing in the universe. It, it's it's part of the whole universal system. So may that influence that I have on the beings around me, may the blessings of my life, the goodness of my life, the, the punya, the merit, the wish, the intention of the heart, that this be a benefit, this be beneficial to all living beings. And the Amina Punya, the sharing of merit, the the uh, metta pawana, all this is are is a practice of the heart. It comes from here. It's not don't if you think about it, you just you can just get critical of them. How do I know that may all beings be happy and oh, crap. Yeah. Just a lot of silly sentiments. You know, all beings be happy. Bah humbug. Or that's that's the uh, that's the critical faculty condemning the heart. And we do that, don't we? We with our negative mind, we can really hate goodness. Uh, to to know goodness is to is to be good to to really love the good the true and the beautiful to to know that and to incline to that as a and that we can only do through through the receptivity of the heart it's not through idealism that we do it it's through opening the heart to life and uh, learning how to to have that courage and that strength and trust and faith to bear with the ups and downs, the the, the good things and bad things, the successes and failures that are just a part of our karma. Karma is like this. Being human, you know. Put up with a lot of irritating things, and living in a society that's generally based on ignorant views. It's uh, quite wonderful that it isn't worse than it is. <laughs> you have to think of it that way. Right. Here in Britain, it's a nice, nice country to live in. In spite of it, it's, it's, it's all grown out of avicca bhajya sankara, 
there's still something operating underneath all that, and it is quite good. And so we want to encourage that and, and be in touch with that, in tune with that goodness, rather than exaggerate the flaws, the faults, the, the unpleasantness that we find experience in the, in the, within ourselves, in our minds, or in the society itself. As a, say the holy life is a, is a way of the heart. It's a, it's a surrender to, to truth. It's a, it doesn't work if it's just an act of will. The holy life, monasticism, doesn't work if it's an act of will. It's a total, it's a <coughs> holocaust, total burning and a surrender to the fire. The purification. So when you're utterly miserable and totally despairing, it, that's the time to be trusting and patient. Surrender to to pain, to accept it, accept all of it, the despair and the disappointment and the and the uh, di- disillusionment, because then your heart will open up. But as long as you're making, trying to make monasticism into, to fit your ideas it, and religious teachings and the holy life to kind of fit into an ideal you have of it, you're, you're going to be terribly disappointed by all this. It's going to be totally disillusioning. If you want it to be what you think it should be according to an idea. So that is conceit, and that is ignorance. So with with our life together here, it's an act of surrender. Let things burn up inside you. Let Let the fires, purification, burn away. Desires, fears, just burn up. And when there's nothing left to burn, then that's the that's the pure heart. That's the liberation, freedom from delusion. <coughs>